in all dog owners in England and Wales would have to insure themselves against their pet attacking someone with more breeds added to the list of banned dogs. This report by Jane Deeth does contain images which some viewers might find distressing. Zeus out for his morning walk with owner Race Ahmed in Nottingham this morning. He's an American bulldog, not one of the breeds banned under the Dangerous Dogs Act. But Race Ahmed is all for the government's proposals to rein in dangerous dogs by forcing every owner in England and Wales to insure themselves against their dog attacking someone, microchipping them and going after irresponsible owners with dog control notices, already being nicknamed dog bows. If you can't control something like him, you're going to get... You're going to get a dog that's going to... It's, you've got to remember the power in him. Yeah. There's a lot of power there. Yeah. And if, if, if somebody that doesn't know how to handle the dog's got the dog, the only thing you're going to get is a dog that's going to be out of control. And him loose on somebody is going to be unbelievable. Today, the Home Secretary said the majority would have to put up with a new law in order to stop a minority who want their dogs to fight. No one can have failed to notice the growing presence on our streets of so-called status dogs, which are chosen by their owners because they are aggressive and intimidating. Not, any, not every owner of such dogs is irresponsible, but at the most extreme end, there is a very small minority who keep a dog, not because they want a, we a, a pet, but because they want <coughs> a weapon. There are four banned breeds. They are the Pitbull Terrier, the Japanese Toza, the Filo Brasileiro and the Dogo Argentino. It was a pit bull which killed four-year-old John Paul Massey from Liverpool at his grandmother's house last year. The government might add other breeds like Staffordshire Bull Terriers to the banned list. But it was an Alsatian which attacked Bethany Shaw from Cheshire, leaving her needing surgery. This dog um, jumped up at me and so I stroked it and then um, it attacked me and then I fell to the ground. Police said they couldn't do anything because Bethany was attacked on someone's doorstep, which is private, not public property. The new laws would extend to people's homes. Every week in England, 100 people are admitted to hospital after being attacked by a dog. That doesn't even include those who are stitched up in A&E. Ten years ago, the number of people needing serious treatment was around 3,500. Last year, that figure was over 5,000 a rise of 50% in a decade. Melanie Page gives legal advice to people who've been found to have banned dogs. She says instead of new laws, we need more training for dogs and their owners. We need to, something in place to stop the attacks happening in the first place. We can only do that by educating the public and the dog owners themselves. And there is concern that the new law will end up demonising dogs and thousands of responsible owners, like Jerry Price, and Louis. I don't really see how it's enforceable, really. I mean, people that have dogs for you know the wrong reasons, sort of thing, like they're trying to penalise. They're not going to bother paying insurance, are they? You know what I mean? So it's sort of pointless. At the end of the day, it just seems like they're trying to tax dog owners, really. Around twenty-five pounds to have your dog chipped, and at least thirty pounds for the insurance against them attacking someone. I don't think that's fair. I think older people like me, I live on my own and, you know, I need a dog for company really more than anything. The Conservatives say Labour has had a decade to shorten the leash on dangerous dogs, but done nothing. The government now has the difficult job of addressing real public fears about some dogs without criminalising all pets. Well, joining us now is Dr. Roger Mugford, an animal behaviour expert. I should say his PhD is, in fact, he's just disclosed to me, in, uh, he was in studying aggressive mice, not dogs. But he has with him a Staffordshire Bull Terrier, Humphrey. Humphrey, you're going to behave. He responds very yes. well to his name um, and to... Well, now, look, it, you've studied people like Humphrey, or dogs like Humphrey. Many people think they are people. But um, are these laws necessary? Yes, I think so. I think the, the, the situation, as the film uh, rather horribly described, is a bit out of control on some of the city estates, uh, including in London. Um, and there's no doubt that dogs like Humphrey are easily trained to be acting as weapons and to intimidate other people, other dogs and other dog owners. Um, and uh, 
So I think bringing in some degree of control in the form of identification, that's, mm -hmm. the, that's the best thing that's in this government discussion paper, that every dog carries a microchip. I think it's just so sensible. But, but let's just burrow down a little bit, because um, here are you with a Staffordshire Bull Terrier of some sort. It's got something yes. else in it as well. But, but um, you haven't got a ring through your ear, not, nor have you got any tattoos, so far as I can see. I mean... Uh, you're not what we seem to anticipate as a Staffordshire Bull Terrier owner. And, and many bull breed owners, Staffordshire Bull Terrier owners, um, are law-abiding ordinary owners and they love them as family pets and they're one of the family. So we, wouldn't, we, we really shouldn't um, indict all uh, owners of this breed and type of dog. But that's but, the difficulty, isn't it? That, because the, it's very difficult to therefore draw up a law that doesn't yes. rather discriminate against and well-behaved people, let alone their dogs. And we have really stupid laws at the moment called the Dangerous Dogs Act Section 1, which makes it illegal to own a pit bull terrier. There are more pit bull terriers now in 2010 than there were in 1991 when the law was introduced. Paradoxically, what we've done and what Parliament in its well-meaning way did was make actually the ownership of scary-looking dogs more desirable because mm -hmm. uh, it, and who wants to own a corgi walking a, a tough estate that's not going to protect you against a gun or a knife attack so first we made them illegal so that increased their popularity secondly we said well i tell you what we'll grab some of them uh, and we'll tattoo and neuter them and then they're really dangerous that makes them secondly more desirable and thirdly um, we will uh, go and uh, but I thought the problem was that, that, that a lot of cross-breeding had gone on to try and make particularly aggressive and unpleasant dogs. I, I don't think it was ne that was necessary. It is very easy to make the sweetest natured dog like Hunt Humphrey into a dangerous and aggressive dog. Well, are you and, as and good as you look, Humphrey? He, he, Humphrey? He wasn't always so... Um, are you um, as good as you look? What about some of this? Oh, what some of them? Anything for that. There you are, go on. Um, so it's He's very so well behaved, he won't even play with me. <laughs> well, it's the, the heat of the studio and, and also the, um, the excitement of the moment. But, um, but that's it, therefore it, it, not it, true. It, Basically, you're saying it is the human being that is disturbed, not the dog. And, and any dog can be made into a dangerous dog. Any dog that becomes aggressive for mm -hmm. uh, reasons and with a responsible owner should first step put a muzzle on it. Secondly, seek professional help from a vet or a, a qualified trainer. Um, and, and of course, Really, education, it's persuasion of these young people who lead pretty deprived lives on mm. some of these inner London estates. Persuading them actually owning a dog is a, is a, is a, 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 not is a responsibility, but it's also a privilege, and a privilege that they too should participate in mainstream society and take the same pl pleasure and pride in our dogs that, that, um, that we all do. Dr. Roger Humphrey, <laughs> yeah, you can eat that now. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you, John.